This entitled mom is about to scam this pizza place, and she thinks she's going to get away with it. What is her crazy plan? And how does she try to use her kids to get away with it? Happy birthday, today's your birthday, and on with the revamped show. So in a previous post, I have been open that I work at a certain pizza chain. Well, due to the virus, this chain has placed a new policy to protect people and their workers. The policy is all delivery orders are now contactless, as well drivers are required to wear a face mask. How a contactless delivery is done is with the use of a one-use recycle box that is put on the floor, then the food is put on top. Since the box is a one-time use box, we aren't allowed to pick it up once it is set on the floor. The delivery driver knocks on the door and stands six feet away from the order. The customer opens and picks up the food as well as the one-use box. Then the delivery driver is allowed to leave. So that is how all deliveries for this chain are supposed to go right now. Well, yesterday I had a long shift that drained me emotionally and physically. So much that I ended up buying something that I had been wanting for a while that I was waiting for payday to buy, but I was like, screw that and bought it. Regardless, back to story. So I was working, waiting for a delivery to pop up. Well, lucky me, a delivery did pop up, and I was next to take the delivery. I was happy since the area was a good one for tips. So I packed the order, grabbed the contactless box, and head my way to the delivery. I arrived, and it was an apartment. So the order was not on the first floor. I made my way to the door and I put the box on the floor as I put the order in it. This is when the man came out. Let's call him Richard. Thanks, but next time just give the order to me. I'm sorry sir, but it's company. I was cut off. I don't give a frick if it's the policy. You give it to me, you got that? I'm sorry sir, but I can't. With that, I head back down. On a side note, the man was barefoot. Not a big deal since he was at home, but still. Richard still screaming. Also, take this with you! Referring to the box and pushing the box with his feet. Folks, I am not allowed to pick up the box once it's down. But there was no way I was going to pick it up now. I'm sorry sir, but I can't since it's one use. Once again being cut off. Richard screams louder. I don't give a crap, pick it up! Have a good day, sir. Pick it up! As he picks it up and throws it at me. Luckily for me, the day was windy and the wind was causing the box to completely miss me. As I leave, a neighbor saw all of that go down and said she was sorry for me having to deal with him. I told her I'd handled worse. Boy, I would regret saying these words. I came back to the store and saw there was another order waiting for me. I packed it, grabbed another contactless box and went to the place. It was another apartment, but it was more of a duplex with two doors on the sides. So I did my whole deal, setting down the box then put the order on top. Me thinking this person would be different, I knock on the door, moved back and waited for the person to open the door. Not even 10 seconds passed when the door opened and there was an older lady. She sees me and looks down. Without a beat, she yells. She will be called Karen as it's quite appropriate for this occasion. Also, she never stops screaming. Why is my food on the floor? Madam, your food is not on the floor. You see, there is a... Cut again. Are you blind? Can't you see my food is on the floor? Why is my food on the floor? Well, due to the virus, it's company policy to have contactless orders. No, that is insanity. How dare you put my food on the floor? You know what? I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to call the store. Go ahead, they will tell you the same. By the way, she has small kids in the house and they see all of this go down. Bring me my dang phone. What's your name? I point to the name tag on my shirt. I can't believe you put food on your floor. That's the food I'm going to feed my grandkids. Now the day is ruined. I don't believe what's going on. But if you're really afraid of this bullcrap, you should be wearing gloves. She puts her phone on speaker and during this, she takes a pic and calls the store. I stay silent, wishing for death. Why did I have two crazy people back to back? P.S. I took a picture of the food just in case for reasons. Ah uh, yes, I want to speak with the manager right now. The manager's name will be Chillbro, since he is a chill bro. Hello, this is CB, how can I help you? Yes, I just ordered food and the delivery driver put my food on the ground. 
Now he is saying it's company policy? His name is, and what is your name? Uh, yes, madam, it's company policy, and my name is Chilbro. No, that's disgusting. How dare you people put the food on the ground? You know what? I'm going to call the Department of Health, and I'm going to report your disgusting company. That food was going to feed my grandkids. And you people want me to feed them food that has been on the ground? Shame on you. Sorry, but it's company policy in order for us to operate. I don't believe that. If he is really afraid, he should wear gloves. Since when was this your policy? Since Monday of last week. That's some bullcrap. I ordered last week and they gave me the food. No delivery driver would do that since doing that would be punished with a week of suspension. Well, they did. So, how can I help you? I want new food and a new delivery driver because this one is too stupid to understand that food doesn't belong on the floor. Madam, please don't insult my employee and the other driver will just do the same. No, I demand you to fix this or else. I will cancel and return the money. Have a nice day. He hangs up. You, I want you out. And if you don't, I'm going to call the police. I go and get my only pen, then leave. The lady screams at me that she is going to call the police. I grab the pen, then leave. As I leave, I see that she sorta of tripped and pushed the order boxes, and they are now on the floor. She screams at me some more. As I leave, I see three of her neighbors come out to see what's going on. The last thing I see is her talking to the neighbor as she points at me. When I got to the store, the general manager arrived. I gave him a copy of the pic and was told by the assistant manager that he dealt with her last week. He said that she called and complained about the food being on the floor that occasion too. He asks what happened to the food on the first run and he told me that she told him that she threw it away. The assistant manager told her she will not get free food and hung up. So it is my belief that she wanted to see if another manager would cave to her demands. But she failed. Lastly, I was told that two people called about the first delivery. The first was the neighbor saying that a guy may call and complain about me even though I did nothing wrong and I should get a raise for not even reacting to the man yelling at me. The second was good old Richard wanting free food because I left trash at his place and had to throw it. Well, I didn't get a raise, sadly, but Richard didn't get free food either, so that's good. No delivery person should be treated that way. At the same time, I wonder how many of these conflicts would be avoided if they explain the situation a little better before people make a delivery order. Honestly, I'd be a little bit confused too if the delivery guy's just like, yo, here's your food, it's on the ground, and here's a random box that you have to throw away now. Now, of course, that doesn't justify the behavior, but I can understand the confusion and emotion behind it. The background info. I was about eight when my brother, five, made friends with a girl in his kindergarten. Let's call her Snob. Snob had an older sister named T and an entitled mom named Karen. Her husband is not really relevant. How we met the entitled family. We recently moved into a new area. We were renting a house in a decent neighborhood. There were lots of entitled people in our old neighborhood. When we started school, my brother apparently made a friend with a girl in his class. This part of the story is a bit blurry as it was a long time ago. Anyways, my mum and dad became quick friends with their family. I don't really know how. Maybe because they were in a new area and wanted friends? Or maybe because they were the same race and that was rare. They had no idea what they were in for with that family. Red flags. I think the first red flag was that they would never let us go into their house. We lived in the same neighborhood and they would always ask to come to our house. This doesn't really matter, but they would get very defensive when we asked to visit. Another red flag was whenever their kids screwed up, it was always me and my brother's fault. Snob was throwing a tantrum because she couldn't play on my dead tablet. My fault. She stole my toys. My fault. Insulted me. My little angel would never say something bad. T always backed up Snob, so it looked like me and brother was always responsible. Red flag three. Karen would always pull my mum into fights over dumb things. One time my mum and Karen went to some Chinese restaurant called Food Palace. Fake name. And Karen said her food tasted bad and had a hair. 
She was arguing with the waitress until the manager came. The manager said something about the restaurant not being responsible for their staff's hair. Or some bullcrap, but not refunding them. And Karen decided, hey, I should bring mum into this. She told my mum something like, I can't believe these low-life jerks, or something like that. Won't refund me. And she made my mum yell at them while Karen smugly watched. My mum regrets this immensely. The vacation incident. Our, and entitled family, decided to go to Florida for a couple of days during summer break to have some fun. We rented a van and some sort of summer house to save gas and money. Our, and entitled family, split the bill. On the way to the beach, Snob would always call me ugly, fat, and stupid in a low voice next to me whenever she had the chance. This made me understandably upset, and whenever I tried to tell Karen, Karen would say, my sweet little girl would never say that. And my mum would stay silent. The dads never really got involved in any of this. And my brother was asleep or something. Again, T would always be like, No, Snob didn't say anything. Most of the vacation was nice. We all had a decent time. But the house only had one bed. Of course, Karen slept in the bed with her daughters. Her reasoning was something like her kids are more important or something. Anyways, nothing else really happened. How we broke ties with the entitled parent. Shopkin incident. Okay, I was really young, about nine when this happened, so don't judge me too harshly. At this stage in my life, me and my brother were really into Shopkins. We would have a massive collection, and even those fridge things. Apparently Snob also really liked Shopkins. During summer break, me, my brother, Snob, and T would go to VBS, Vacation Bible School, together. My mum would sometimes drive all of us from VBS to have a playdate or something. One of these times, I had my Shopkins I wanted to show Snob. It was a nice collection, about 26 Shopkins. Snob had her eye on a very pretty, very rare, Cupcake Shopkin. She wanted it very badly and offered me five Shopkins. I really didn't want her to have it, but considering her a friend, I said fine, for five Shopkins you can have it. I remember being nice and throwing in the fridge too. Snob was beyond ecstatic and took the cupcake Shopkin. The next day she brought me three Shopkins and an eraser. I told her, where's the other two? And Snob was like, I'll be damned tomorrow. This lasted for almost a month. I eventually stopped asking for it. A few weeks later, Karen called my mum, yelling and screaming about, how your brat hurt my poor baby's feelings. She was referring to the Shopkins. She said how Snob has so much stress from the Shopkin situation and how I owe her all my Shopkins. Karen told my mum how she was a failure and other insults. This is where my mum cut ties with Karen and her two precious brats. We moved to a different neighborhood soon after that, not related to Karen. Schoolyard deals were always the worst. They were almost never honored properly. You'd feel bad making a deal when you know it's so heavily in your favor, but you're like, well, if you really want to do it, sure. And then eventually the cogs start turning and they're like, wait a minute, I want to back out of this. This isn't good for me. And somehow you end up as the bad guy. You're like, well, I tried to warn you. I asked you if you were sure, but okay, dude. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had one of these schoolyard deals and what was the situation like for you. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.